no, I, I think that everything in life has risk. So there's a there's a black swan risk, an unknown unknown, and, and anybody intellectually honest has to admit that there is that risk. That's not what I would say. What I would say is you have to, you've got a, a bucket of money. Let's come back to Africa. Okay. You've got a you've got a hundred thousand dollars in Africa. You've got to invest it in something. You've got to put it into a building, into land, into an African currency, into something else. What are you going to do? There is a hundred percent certainty that you're going to lose eighty percent of your money in most currencies over the next decade. There's a hundred there's a hundred percent certainty you're going to lose ninety five percent of your wealth over thirty years in just about every currency. And uh, and so you have to work through each of these issues and say, what's the cost of doing nothing? What's the cost of not taking a risk? What's the risk free rate? Well, the, I mean, the risk free rate is the monetary inflation rate. So the price that you pay to not do something is the rate at which the money is collapsing. If you were sure. a Russian, they just lost 35 percent of their wealth by not doing anything in the matter of weeks. So. So in this particular case, you just have to look at the array of options. If, uh, if you're an investor in uh, South America or Asia or Africa, I would say the, the risk-free rate is much higher for you, right? The ins like you're in Lebanon, what are you going to do in Lebanon? How about Afghanistan? How about Iraq, right? What are you going to do? Um, in all those situations, they're thinking maybe I'll trust my money to Tether. You know, Tether, Tether's run by Bitfinex. It's just a company. So why is it that people in many countries are more willing to uh, trust a company out of Hong Kong that's running a stable coin on the crypto network than they're willing to trust their local bank? Well, because, in fact, Tether is probably a better bet than, than betting your money on most currencies in the world. Other than the top 12 currencies, the rest are collapsing. Why do Tether if you can just do the U.S. dollar or USDC? Well, you can't. That's the point. Mm -hmm. why, do, why do Tether and if you can just do the U.S. dollar? Okay, how many people in Africa can walk into a Bank of America in New York City, open an account, and then get the U.S. dollar? None of them. That's the whole point. Right? And, okay, I did it. I'll give you an example. I put a million dollars into Bank of America in Argentina when the dollar was worth one peso because I didn't trust the peso. I did it. What do you think happened? The government basically shut down for one day. They sent an edict to the bank saying all dollars must be converted back into pesos. Then they went off the dollar peg and they divided the peso 10 to 1. And I lost 90% of my money. Okay, so why do Tether instead of Trust Bank of America in Argentina? You tell me, mm -hmm. right? Because what's the odds that Tether is going to go to zero in the next year? If the odds were 90% your money is going to zero in the next year by putting it somewhere else, then you would think maybe that's a risk I want to take. So, you know, people are forced out the risk curve based upon the monetary policy and in a hyperinflating economy in Zimbabwe, right? You're going to take everything you've got. You're going to buy anything. I don't know if you, if you saw, um, you'll buy toilet paper, you'll buy boxes of cereal, right? You'll buy anything. Uh, there's pictures in Turkey, people, and this is this year, people go into, uh, they go into a, a, a car lot and they buy all the cars. Okay. So here's a, here's the news story. The government impounds 54 cars that were bought by a hoarder. Someone had the temerity to actually convert their currency into automobiles because they thought the automobiles would hold their value better than the currency. And then the government seizes their automobiles. Okay, if you, if you look at every single war, right, the, the war always has the story of the speculators, right? The speculators, the, the, the smugglers, and the hoarders. What's your crime? Your crime was not holding your money in the currency, which was losing 90% of its value, but rather deciding to buy too many automobiles. No, your crime was hedging. 
Yeah, right? something like that. Pick, pick. I can create more cars. I can create more luxury watches. I can print. I can create more gold. I can create more shares of stock. I can create more bonds. I can create any commodity. They're commodities by definition. Given enough money and time, I can create infinite of any of them. Bitcoin is a scarcity. Okay, name another scarcity in the world, right? And technically, it's not clear there is another scarcity, right? A scarcity is something of which it is absolutely capped. If the price goes up by a factor of a thousand or a million, it is absolutely capped. That is not the case with gold, soybeans, silver, stock, bonds, real estate, single family homes, ships, planes, trains, nothing else. Everything else could be manufactured. And of course, if the price goes up, the, the, the incentive to manufacture more will go up, which is why, you know, buying a house isn't necessarily going to be a great store of value in an inflating economy because you're going to have incentives for someone else to dilute the value of your house. If you do buy a house, better off to buy a house on land than a, than a condo on the 57th floor of a building. And if you do buy it on land, better off to buy it on, uh, on waterfront property. And, and if you buy waterfront property, better off to buy it on the beach. And if you buy it on the beach, you're better off to buy it in the, in the most desirable location of affluent, intelligent people for the next 30 years. Sure. That, and you can do that for 10, 20, 30 years. That's Palm Beach. That's the Hamptons, right? You can figure mm -hmm. that out. Now figure it out for 100 years. That's, this is the problem, right? When you go out but of for the individual, though, who cares for 100 years? The individual. How many individuals think 100 years, though, Michael? Institutions think 100. Institutions do, but how many? Even some institutional leaders only care about the return they're going to give you for a decade or two. They don't sit there and <laughs> next think quarter. about 100 years. I, I think here's the point, I mean, that's, though. that's one of the problems we have with our uh, current uh, uh, political system, even we have in America. You know, the, the guy who gets elected, he only cares about two terms. How much can he really do? It's tough to... The issue to... is the asset's reflexive. If... If I told you that that uh, you could buy this digital asset and it would lose its all of its value in 17 years, then people start to amortize it down. And when it gets to be 12 years old, people start to discount it. It's like you don't want to own a building in London where there's a ground lease that expires in 37 years, right? That's not as valuable as owning the, the land outright for 1,000 years. So if I told you it's good for 10 years, I think, and the other thing is good for 100 years, everybody wants the thing that's timeless, and the difference is going to create a marginal difference in the price. Let's say it's 2% or 3%. Okay, so all the intelligent money, go, they stampede in the thing that's 2% better, and when they stampede in the thing that's 2% better, liquidity is 10x more, and then the money collapses out of the other thing, and it, it goes to zero. That's why Bitcoin Cash collapses, Bitcoin Satoshi Vision collapses. Anything that's sort of like the same thing but not quite as good will go to zero. That's why YouTube is YouTube. Right? It's like there, there is a tendency uh, of winner take all in these things. And, uh, and it, it does matter, right? Now, you have children, you have grandchildren. Right. I, I never met anybody that said, you know, I just I kind of want to keep my family generational wealth intact for 12 years, but then I don't care anymore. Right. You, you sort of care. And, and, and there's one more element to this. It's it's not just the ability to know that the asset will hold value 100 years out. It's the portability. <laughs> you know, if you're living in uh, you're living in Nazi Germany in 1932, Having portable property versus non-portable property makes a difference. Might make a life or death. There are people that are dead because they couldn't move the property, mm -hmm. right? It does make a difference to be able to move it. So you can't you can't blink your eyes and teleport a billion dollars of real estate in Los Angeles somewhere else in the world. You can't even move it somewhere else in the country. Being able to move the money from a city to another city, from a state to a state from a country to a country and from a counterparty to a different counterparty all of these things are are extraordinarily valuable mm -hmm. the difference between life and death in many cases and, and and that's what bitcoin gives you that you don't get with anything else